where is the place, where is Mecca on any of the ancient maps? Better yet, when did it really appear for the first time? Hello everyone, welcome back to a continuation of this video series on the historical criticism of Islam. Today we're going to talk about the place yet again. With me here to unpack all of this for us is Dr. Jay Smith. Dr. Jay, welcome back. Okay, I'm going to, this is, this is absolutely important because we're talking about a place so a place would be on a map and maps are uh, hugely important uh, because they do locate the places that were references the, the places that we're investigating. And so that's why it was important to do this. Dr. Patricia Corona was the one that really did this. And this is, I'm using her her uh, research. She is the one that researched this between 1977 and 1987 in the last century, that 10 year period. Uh, she wanted to find, she had the same question. Okay, if we're looking for a place, let's look at the maps. Let's just look at the maps. And I'm sure her intent was really to prove it, basically. Yeah. The difficulty is that there are no ancient maps of Arabia. They just don't exist because nobody really thought about making maps. Maps is a much more later invention. It was usually it was usually the Europeans that are best known for the modern maps or the whole map making industry. There the Chinese had maps of local areas, but no one had bothered to map Arabia. Why do you think no one had bothered to map Arabia? Well, usually you map things that are important. That's right. And what was wrong with uh, Arabia? Well, obviously, uh, th well, there are parts that were important that were mapped. It appears that certain parts were not that important, insignificant, you know, so they didn't want to invest the time or the money on that. There are only three places there. I mean, there are four places that are mapped that had local maps. One was the northern part of Arabia. Uh, the other was the southern part of Arabia. The northern part, because that's where the civilizations were. Uh, that was where Arabia was known as. It was known as Arabia Petraea. Right. The southern part is the was where the Sabaeans are and so there was lots of uh, civilizations there so there, that was mapped. There's ports, there is uh, commerce taking place. That's right yeah. and then you have on the west you have the Red Sea that's where the trade route went up the mm -hmm. Red Sea and on the east you have the Straits of Hormuz you have the Persian Gulf so that would have been mapped. Those are just local maps but nothing was mapped in the central part and the reason is very simple. It was Petraea Deserta known as Petraea Deserta that means desert. Desert. Right. If there's a desert, there's no one there. We're going to talk more about that later on. So obviously, the, the, in order for Patricia Corona to try to find a map, she needed to go back to the earliest maps that existed. And the earliest maps were done by Europeans of Arabia. This is of Arabia. The earliest maps were done by Europeans, not people who had gone there. What they were doing is that they went back to Ptolemy. Ptolemy from the second century. And Ptolemy is the one who is, wrote a great book on geography. And so he would be the one that you go to since he was the one from that area. He was the first one to write down about Arabia, Petraea and Arabia, the, the Arabia itself, the southern part, the Sabaean area and the northern part. And so he would describe mountains and rivers and cities and towns. He would describe all this. And so what happened, uh, the Europeans took his descriptions and then they tried to put it in a map. So the first one that was ever produced is this one here. So let's go back. Let's go back to the slide and let's look at his map. So this is the first, very first one. And this was uh, created by Leinhard Holle. See his name up there in yellow? 1482. So we're talking about the 15th century. 15th century, this is 800 years after Muhammad. So this is 1500 years after supposedly Mecca existed. And he is taking Ptolemy's references, putting all the names that he could find and putting him where he thought that Ptolemy was referring to. Mm -hmm. What do you notice is missing? Mecca. Mecca is missing. The most important city, the center of everywhere, the center of history where Adam and Eve yeah, lived. Exactly. Adam and Eve, Abraham and Ishmael. I mean, they definitely predated the second century. So obviously Ptolemy did not know about Mecca, the most significant city, the, 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 the city that should have been the first thing he put on the map is not in this map from 14. Eighty-two. Now, there was another map that was done a little bit later in 1540 when uh, by a man named Laurent Fries. He created this map, again, to take what Ptolemy had said. He wanted to improve 
on what Lenart had done earlier. So about, about a century later, he put this map. Uh, what's missing? Mecca. Okay, so there you see another problem. Looks like Mecca is not on this map. You see all kinds of different references. Take a look at it carefully. Blow it up if you can. Tell me if you can find Mecca there. And I encourage anybody, don't trust me, go and look at these maps. You blow them up and see if Mecca is referred to. It's not on this map. So then we go to 1571. So about 30 years later, you have Sebastian Munster, who puts together this map. Uh, and this is done 1571. He is from Germany. He takes what Ptolemy said, what Ptolemy had written, and he introduces what he thinks is an even more accurate map. What's missing? Mecca again. It's getting redundant, isn't it? Yeah. It's getting redundant. So Mecca is missing in every one of these uh, three so far maps. There's another one that uh, that uh, Patricia Corona referred to, and she looked at this one here. This is a 7th century redacted map. In other words, it was a modern map, a more modern map. She didn't give the date on it, but it's redacted back to what people thought the 7th century looked like. What's missing? Mecca again? So they should have had Mecca by now. Certainly by the 14th, 15th, and 16th century, they should have known about Mecca because Mecca was well known by then. Right. Mecca was very well known by then. So why, why, if this is a redacted map back, why in the world didn't they have Mecca on this map? Now, that's not the only one. Here's another one that Patricia Corona refers to. Uh, this is a 7th century redacted map back. Uh, looking back, she didn't give a date for it because we don't really know the date of this one. But again, certainly by, this is after the, fourth, uh, the 15th century. So this is still coming out of Europe. This is after the 15th century. They should have had Mecca on that map. Remember, this is the center of history. This is where Adam and Eve lived. This is where Abraham lived. This is where all the prophets were buried. Well, 70 to 300 of the prophets were buried. What in the world is going on here? Once again, we're missing Mecca. Now, here's a, a number of questions I have. See if you can answer them. Maps are supposed to show where places exist. Isn't Mecca the most important place for Arabia? That's what the standard Islamic narrative told us. Now, why is it not there? Somebody must have missed it, right? Now, if you look carefully here, you can see Makoraba there. It's about halfway up. Let me just point to it. There is Makoraba. And some people have said, ah, that must be Mecca. Look and see where I'm pointing right now. Makoraba, can you see where it is right there? Yeah, it's in the middle. It's in the middle, so it's not in the right location. Okay, so they didn't get their, they didn't get their dimensions right. Could that be Mecca? Uh, you know, Jay, they took the time to draw the shorelines and they missed the location of Mecca? Well, Gibson actually takes this on. He says, yes, that's his Makoraba, but is Makoraba the same word as Mecca in Arabic to begin with? No, it isn't. Of course not. What are the major, what are the three major consonants in Makoraba? Karaba. Yeah. The place of the Karib, or yeah. whatever it is. Mukaraba, yeah. Mukaraba. So if it's got the wrong consonants to begin with. But then he said, and so did Patricia Corona. She took this on as well. She says, first of all, Arabic. Anybody who knows Arabic knows that that's not the same name. But then Gibson did a much better thing. He went back to Ptolemy, and he went back, and he wanted to look at where all the mountains were that Ptolemy talks about and where the rivers were. Uh, what probably, and he noticed that every one of these maps were written were done by Europeans who never really had been to Arabia. Those rivers did not exist in the middle of the desert. There were no rivers in the middle of the desert. Where are those rivers coming from? You can see here on the on the map. Right. They're much further south. Mm -hmm. In fact, when you look and see where the rivers are and the mountains are, and when you look where the towns that are close to the rivers and close to the mountains that Ptolemy did talk about. You push everything south. What, what Ptolemy did not realize is that he had not really been there physically. He didn't realize that the whole central part of Arabia was desert. He forgot about the desert. And he just assumed that all these places were further north. But Gibson says, no, there are no rivers up there, and there are these mountain ranges are much further south. So he redistributed, putting where the mountain ranges were and then putting where the rivers were and where the towns that were close to those rivers, he put them where they were, and guess what he found? Makaraba is way down in Yemen. It's way down south. And he recorrected it, showing that this is where really where that Makoraba is. So he helped us on that one on top of that. But so, okay, so the maps don't show it. And I don't know why the Europeans didn't think this through. 
when they were putting these maps together in 1400 and in 1500, and these redacted maps even uh, later than that in the 18th and the 19th century, why did they not question this? Why is it no one came up with this problem that the Mecca is not on any of these maps? Doesn't that sound rather curious to you? Absolutely. Well, Patricia Crona asked this question. She wanted to know why no one had really brought this up. So she decided to do some work on her own. And guess what she found? She wanted to go back and find out where the first reference. Now, remember, this woman reads and writes 15 languages. She knows everything. She can write. She can read and write Akkadian and Aramaic and uh, all Arabic and all this Nabataean Aramaic and and uh, 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 Syriac uh, Aramaic Syriac. She can read, read the, all this. And she went back to the earliest documents and she went to and she found a document called the Apocalypse of Pseudo Methodius Continuato Byzantia Arabica, which is the first reference she could find to this place called Mecca, written in 741 A.D. That's the 8th century. That is almost 100 years. In fact, it's 100 years after Muhammad's death that the first reference for it. What does this say to you? That tells me that Mecca wasn't as prominent a city or a town like the standard Islamic narrative would want us to believe. Absolutely. To me, that's a huge problem. What I want to do next, going to the next uh, episode, is I want to look at those Qiblas again. I want to talk about those Qiblas that Gibson Roy referred to. And of course, if anyone is not familiar with this, uh, we did an entire video series just on the Qiblas alone. So the purpose of these shows here is to give you snippets and focus on big arguments. But if you want to really enjoy learning more, expand more, believe it or not, almost every one of those arguments we've done like a video series on that. So we encourage you. Uh, to go and search either Finder Films or Sierra International to learn more about those arguments. So next time, we will be discussing the Qibla. Until then, have a blessed day. Mm -hmm.